Well, it, it came, as I said, it came from my daughter, Emily. And she and I have always done some hiking together. She's very interested in hiking, and she has gone on a lot of the sailing trips I've gone on. So we've done lots of long-term things together. And in the winter, eh, maybe November or December, she said, how would you like to hike the Appalachian Trail in Georgia? And, and what was your first And reaction? I said, well, I think I only want to do the Appalachian Trail if we do the whole thing. And then she thought for a second and thought, okay, yeah, let's try that. Yeah. So that was the beginning. And then, and compared And to, about what the time frame was that? Well, that was, a prob I think, about five months before we actually left. Five months? Yeah. And yeah. so that's pretty quick as far as getting things ready. And, but for me, it was easy because I was retired and I'd been used to going on long trips. So my, you know, Karen was used to being without me for big chunks of time. And Emily was between jobs at that moment. And so it all kind of fit together really nicely. What was your process of, of getting ready? Well, there were a couple of things. First, there are lots of books about the trail and two or three primary ones. We looked at how people had organized their hike, what things were important, what things weren't important, what different gear we would need, because I've done a lot of hiking, but mostly it's in mountains where I'm carrying climbing equipment and fairly heavy tents because of the threat of very bad weather. And so both of us got some lighter gear because in the Appalachian Trail, the whole the whole trick is to be absolutely as light as you can be and try not to air too much on the side where you're going to be too uncomfortable, but where you have light gear that doesn't keep you weighed down when you're hiking such long distances every day. And about what do you recall about what you spent to get ready on equipment? I would equipment? assume we probably each spent easily $2,000 on equipment. Mm -hmm. And for me, it, it worked out well. I did have to replace my tent after about 1,000 miles. The, what, the zipper, the main zipper in my tent just gave out. And I'd had that tent before the trail. I'd had it for three or four but years. It wasn't a super light tent. Uh, it, well, it's a very light single person, not the lightest, but it was a very light tent. Yeah. It wasn't a tent that I would go climbing with. It was I, suitable, though, for yeah, this. Yeah, it yeah. was a three season, one person of the trail. Tent. Let me check this and, out. Um, why did you spend, why end up spending well, two nights there? We were going to spend one night there, but. We woke up the next the the next morning and looked at the weather, and it was going to be twenty to twenty four degrees or colder up on the ridge, and we thought, well, this is crazy. This would be the coldest temperature of the entire trail. Why would we make our first night on the AT so cold? Because our gear really wasn't rated for that temperature. We were prepared to be under freezing, but not low twenties. Yeah. And so we just decided to wait a day because then the temperatures were going up two or three degrees. So when you started, what, what kind of temperatures did you run into? Just below freezing, freezing and just below. Yeah. And that was for about a month that, that lasted. That, I mean, not always that cold, but there were, you know, little breaks in the weather where it was warmer, but, but it was overall pretty cold. Are you in the mountains that, that all first month? Always in the mountains. And, you know, that's the thing about the Appalachian Trail. It always, as you drive down Route 81 or other roads, if you see a mountain in the distance, probably the Appalachian Trail is on top of that mountain. If it's uncomfortable. It's always on top of the mountain. It goes down and up and down and up and down and up. What was the uh, term, the, the puds you mentioned of that? Oh, yes, the pointless ups and downs. Puds. Continually, up yes. and down, up yes. and down. Um, so if you see someplace that's uncomfortable... In the distance. The trail is probably there. <laughs> and you think, yeah. what's up there on the yeah. mountain? <laughs> and that's what makes it a challenge, though, I think, because, um, you know, and Emily and I might finish the trail next summer, which is good, you know, and it'll be great. But, but the whole art and the, the ability to go from the very beginning to the very end in one year, weather has a lot to do with that. as uh, dramatic to me as it might be to some people who don't spend a lot of time doing physical things outdoors by themselves. So that didn't really surprise me. But, um, but I think, you know, it was cer it's certainly such a long-term goal. It takes so many months to finish it that it, the way you approach it day by day to reach a goal becomes a pretty interesting thing 
that you know it's that that constant i mean people will say well just one step in front of the other that's the way you do it and and it really crystallizes that idea where all you have to do is keep walking every day and you'll get to the end but but you're in your out of and away from mostly away from all the other concerns that go through your life. Yep, that's true. You can't do anything about them. <laughs> <laughs> well, except that that's also the hard thing is that you still you're still thinking about those things, but you know, but th- but there's nothing you can do about it. And if you haven't planned something correctly, y- you can get I think very stressful wondering what's going to happen if you keep going when all this other stuff is going on outside. And that was part of the motivation to stop. A little bit, but that wasn't the big motivation. The big motivation was really just my physical condition. I thought, I, I just don't know if it's safe for me to go, to keep going. Yeah, you need to go find you you need to go find your mom. So where's your mom? I saw your mom head up into the woods. You're supposed to still be lying down down there. Yeah, no no, don't bond with me. I I don't know. No, that doesn't really help. I can't do anything for you. So I'm going to head down the trail. You stay here. You stay here. No, no. Oh, I'm sorry, dear mama. Oh, well, I'm going to keep going and I hope you I hope you sit down or something. Yeah, yeah, you're not looking great. Okay, I'm going to turn my camera off and head down the trail. And do you think you'll go back next summer or you... That's the tentative plan. Yeah. Is it? We have to well, it's not I would like to do that, but it's all just a matter of you know, I mean, it's a, it's rare to be able to take that many months and one or two months is easy, but as soon as you get farther than two months, it's hard to get that, that kind yeah. of time. So. You, you quit when you wanted to. Yeah. Well, and it is that, that thing of, you know, anything you do that has either some risk or some physical component, I think, you know, sometimes people get in big trouble when they don't know when to stop. Whether, I mean, in my case, it was, I was worried physically about myself that, you know, maybe I could have, maybe I could have finished it, but I just weighed the, the consequences and thought I could really hurt myself if my body gets worse and I took a bad fall. Um, and, you know, I think that's an important element to know when you, when you have to stop or turn back. You don't want to be carried off on a stretcher. No, it's a bad ending. Always a bad ending. Uh, was um, this one of the most incredible, remarkable experiences of your life? It was. And, you know, as I told you that it, my daughter is, my daughter Emily, much more a fan of the Appalachian Trail than I am. Um, and she's a real fan and just loves everything about the trail, which is great. I, you wanna, and I respect uh, yeah. her for that. Well, so I think much. when you were asking about timing, I would get up early in the morning, but I would usually stop hiking by about three in the afternoon. And some of the younger hikers, they would get up reasonably early and they would hike until it was dark. But for me, I wanted that extra time to let my body recover. So you stopped around three, yeah. And did, was that it for the day? Yep, I would just put up my tent, and usually I take a nap. Well, either nap or lie down in the tent, just get off my feet for two or three hours, and then I'd cook dinner, and then I'd go to sleep. And what did what did you think of your food, your cooking, and 
I mean, did well, you get tired of your? I never really did, but it alternated between instant mashed potatoes with, with tuna packets, or um, what was another one? Some sort of rice, instant rice with tuna packets, and then the third one was instant couscous with tuna packets. <laughs> That was it for many, dinner. Many tunas supplied your, uh, your <laughs> the protein. Energy. Yeah, yeah. Um, was that like MREs? No, no, just off-the-shelf grocery store stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Because the you know the the camping food like Mountain House and those companies, if you ate many of those, that very expensive because those are costing you know around ten dollars each now. That, that's but, an expensive day. Yeah, yeah, but you could get mashed potatoes with. Tuna for, you know, two dollars total or three dollars. Uh, and what what was uh, your I, daughter's? Uh, what were her thoughts on her her experience? That, that well, she, she loves it. She's much more of a. She loves the Appalachian Trail. She loves everything about it. She's a real fan of the trail. Yeah. So her mental aspect of it for the hiking different than mine. I kind of put up with it, <laughs> and she just <laughs> loves it. She loves everything about it. Yeah. So, so I'm, you know, I, I, I know it was very hard for her when physically she couldn't keep going and I feel really badly for her because she, she was the one who, who, you know, just loved the whole experience. And how, how did it work? How was she picked up? Did her husband come for her? Or? I think my wife brought her back when she, when she met us in Gatlinburg and cause they just live an hour from here. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that wasn't a problem getting getting her picked up and getting her off the trail. No, not really. Did, it, is that why she made the decision to stop right there? Because I, yeah, I got to ride home. Well, <laughs> it, it was because I mean, it's at that point it is far enough down there that just calling somebody up and saying, oh, "Why don't you come pick me up?" Was it for you a, a, a spiritual and a transitionary? phase of life did you learn things about yourself well, and it's hard to say because you know I, I mean, you know for my sailing trips and things I've done a lot of things alone for long periods of time and so that side of things I'm not sure it was quite as as uh, dramatic to me as it might be to some people who don't spend a lot of time doing physical things outdoors by themselves